Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and I'm also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. What I'm going to talk about in this video is my predictions on how the climate, the abrupt climate change that's presently occurring on our planet will play out over say the next three years till about 2020 and also for a decade after that till about 2030 or so. So it's just based on my understanding of the science of the overall system and the study that I've been doing, the research that I've been doing for the last four, um, well, four or five years I was going to say, but more like seven years. So basically what's happening right now, so we're almost in February 2017, the Arctic sea ice is not reforming properly. And the reason it's not reforming properly is because it's just too damn hot up in the uh, Arctic region. The Arctic region is getting exponential loss of snow cover over the continents in the spring. That's declining at about a rate of 22% per decade. And also the Arctic sea ice is declining at about 12% per decade. You know, we're talking about massive declines in the extent, which are areas covered with 15% or more sea ice in the area, you know, with 100% concentration of ice. And also in the volume of ice, the thickness is going down. We don't have, uh, essentially we're out of multi-year ice in the Arctic. The ice just doesn't stick around. Multi-year ice is ice that's there for two years or longer. Basically it survives through the melt season. So there's minimal amounts of multi-year ice. The only thick ice that there is in the Arctic is the ridged ice, which is just north of the uh, Canadian archipelago. And what we saw this summer is the ice was so compromised in strength and thickness that it was more like slush. And it was just going to, it just worked its way through the islands of the Canadian archipelago, um, which uh, we don't normally see because normally it's ridged up there even in the summer. The general circulation pattern when you have ice is you have cold temperatures on top of the ice. So that creates cold air is dense, that creates a high pressure area at the surface in the Arctic. Because of the Coriolis force, that high pressure air leaves and deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere. So it sets up what's called the Beaufort Gyre of winds, which then move the ice in that pattern around the Arctic basin. And you have the Transarctic Drift, which carries ice out into the North Atlantic. Um, the Greenland Sea up in that region and you also it leads to export of ice out through the Fram Strait between Greenland and Svalbard. So we're actually seeing days right now where we have losses of 100,000 square kilometers of ice you know in a couple days and the this is this is incredibly uh, ridiculous for this time of year you know, the ice should just be forming and expanding. But what's happening is, is the ocean is quite warm around the ice. There's strong wave action around the ice. That wave action causes mixing. We have fresh water on the surface from the ice that melted in the summer. And that fresh water is very cold, but it's uh, lighter than warmer water which is very salty down below. So the wave action, the strong wave action causes the vertical mixing. And we have areas over the East Siberian Arctic shelf where the water temperature in the water column right down to the 5,200 meter depth of that shelf is very, very warm. And that warm water is causing increasing levels of methane emissions in the Arctic. You know, methane has an enormous greenhouse gas potential on a few year time scale, it's 150, 200 times that of CO2, the global, the GWP or global warming potential. Um, on a 10 year time scale it's 86 times and on a 100 year time scale it's 34 times. And that number is always quoted wrong in uh, the media. They always say it's, you know, methane is 20 or 24 or 25 times stronger at warming than CO2. They always get that number wrong. 
So what happens as we lose more and more sea ice and more and more snow cover exponentially? We're going to get a blue, get a blue ocean event and that's where we have essentially no ice in the Arctic Ocean. And when that happens, for the first time, within, you know, say probably within three years, you know, be this summer, you know, the summer of 2017 will be very interesting, very risky. Then um, what's going to happen is the oceans will be a lot warmer. Now, the ocean, the, the, um, the ice acts as a strong sink of heat. It takes that heat to melt the ice. So uh, the amount of heat that melts a kilogram of sea ice actually will heat up that water, an equivalent kilogram of water, to 80 degrees Celsius. So what happens is the ice keeps the Arctic cold, we lose the ice, the temperature is going to skyrocket. It's already, you know, for long periods of time, 20 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Now, how does that affect the rest of the planet? Well, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. So first of all, when we lose the sea ice and we have open water, then uh, because the water is warmer in the fall, the land will cool down, the water is warm, there's that warm air rises, the, high, the air above the water is warm, warm air rises, creates a low pressure area at the surface. Because it's low pressure at the surface, air will move in from all directions from the south and deflect to the right. So that will cause a Beaufort gyre, which goes anti-clockwise instead of the one we're familiar with. And it will also cause the transpolar drift to reverse direction. So this is bad news because what it does is it will draw in warm water from the Atlantic, maintaining this ice-free state. So within a couple of years of having no ice, sea ice for, say, September, duration of about a month, you know, a couple of weeks to a month, say by 2020, then what will happen is by 2021, 2022, we'll have no sea ice in the Arctic for uh, August, September, October. It'll bracket September about a month. Within another couple of years, um, add on another month. So that will be July, August, September, October, November. No sea ice. And then within a decade of the initial blue, uh, blue ocean event, I would expect there to be no sea ice at all in the Arctic. So this is going to have enormous ramifications for humanity because Greenland sitting here with massive amounts of ice. Antarctic also has massive amounts of ice. In fact, if Greenland all melted the ice, it would raise sea levels seven meters. Antarctic, West Antarctic ice sheet, another five meters. East Antarctic ice sheet would bring the total uh, sea level rise on the globe to about 67, 70 meters. So we're talking about 230 feet. How quickly would that happen? All the total melt? Well, how much, you know, if you look at the melt rates from Greenland and Antarctica, they're rising, they're doubling about every seven years or so. And that's happened, that's held constant, that doubling period has been maintained over, say, three doubling periods, which is about the last 20 years. If that trend is continuing, when we have all every reason to expect it will, then it will Basically, you can just do the, do the math, and we're talking about, about a 7 meter sea level rise by 2070. And I did a separate video on that, on, on that particular um, thing several years ago. Like, it's just common sense. It's physics, you know, of the climate system. So, if that happened in 2070, 7 meters, back off 7 years, so 2063 would be a sea level rise of about three and a half meters. Uh, back off another seven years. So uh, 2056, that would be a rise of about one and three quarter meters. And back off, you know, another seven years to 2049. And we're talking about almost a meter of sea level rise. Now, that's, that's, so that, that's the numbers I came up with a couple of years ago. Now, John Kerry was in Marrakesh, the COP, uh, the, the, the last COP, the COP 22, I guess. And uh, I wasn't there. Um, I was in Paris for the previous year 
the 2016 uh, COP, where the agreement was to keep global average temperatures to 2 degrees uh, above pre-industrial, and 1.5 was the aspiration. You know, how the heck are we going to do that when 2016, the be you know, some months in 2016, we're already 1.5 degrees above the 1880 to 1910 average. But you need to add another 0.3 to go back to 1750 to compare apples to apples. So in that case, uh, that we already had 1.8 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial beginning of, beginning of 2016. And then that dropped off a bit to only being 1.6 degrees above pre-industrial uh, for the rest of the year. I mean, the average was was uh, huge, you know, you know, 1.5 or so. So how how we can maintain those numbers? I, I you know it's a, like a pipe dream. It's a fairy tale. So so basically, you know, the cats love these videos. They get lots of food here. You know, they're not too chunky, too, too fat. So you know, no no animals are harmed in the filming of this video. You know, they actually, you know, rather enjoy it. I haven't used them as props. I expect this video to go viral. Please help me out. You know, I have cats in it. I'm trying everything to get the message out on, on uh, climate change. So, so sea level rise are going to rapid. Sea levels are going to rapidly rise. Now we're already seeing a warm, a, or sorry, a cold blob here south of Greenland. You know, in the summers from the melt water, and then as the Gulf Stream comes up, you know, it tries to cut through and stuff. We've seen the Gulf Stream behaving strange. We've seen the jet streams slowing down. So the jet streams, the, we've got the equatorial temperatures not changing too much. We've got the Arctic warming like crazy because we're losing sea ice and snow cover. Warming five to eight times faster than the average. This lowers the temperature difference between the Arctic and the equator. Now, now heat moves from the equator, which is very hot, to the cold poles deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere and forms these jet streams. So these jet streams have a wave-like motion around the planet. Now as the, and of course during the summer, northern hemisphere summer, it gets warmer, the sun's up higher, so the jet streams uh, change location. Um, and then in the winter it gets colder up there, they tighten up, right? The speed depends on the season as well. Um, so, but what happens is, as the uh, temperature warms like crazy, then the, there's less heat transfer, the jet streams slow down. And when they slow down, they become much wavier. The, the crests are much higher. In fact, the crests are going right up to the North Pole, and they're bringing temperatures above zero even in the winter when there's absolutely no sunlight at the North Pole. And the troughs of these jet streams are moving very far south, and in fact, they're actually crossing the equator and I had a whole video back in the summer of 2016 on that you know it was, it was attacked by the Washington Post and I defended it and you know took a lot of flack but you know I stick with it. I mean it just makes sense the jet streams you know they're going to go so far north they're going to go so far south they connect with the southern hemisphere this causes mixing of weather you know takes away seasonality basically what we're seeing because of the warming is we're losing the temperature difference with latitude in the northern hemisphere and jet streams are moving slower much wavier and they're causing extreme weather events for example in 2010 the uh, ridge of the jet stream basically was up here over Moscow and the trough went down over Pakistan okay and it was locked in this position for a month in July Moscow over 30, 35 degrees for the whole month. Drought, failure of the grain crop, 40% uh, loss of grain crop. No exports from Moscow triggered the Arab Spring. Over Pakistan, the trough was sitting there. Huge rains for the whole month and basically 70%, 75% of the country was flooded out with massive infrastructure damage. We've seen jet streams stalling over Cal near Calgary, over the Banff, over mountains, causing huge rain on snow event, and that plug of water went in through Calgary, flooded out the downtown, caused a uh, 